What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic and today we're looking at an epic printer that I made. After looking at the paintball mod with Dr. Pixel Plays, I decided that, uh, you know, I needed to build a printer. We had talked about it in his video. If you guys don't know who he is, I'll put a link in the description. He made this epic paintball mod and I decided the only appropriate thing would be to make a printer. So I've got a digital display here of all these logic gates and we can actually set them all individually. I've just set up a basic checkerboard pattern and we're gonna just start the print cycle here. So we'll let that go. And we are currently printing with black ink onto a blue sheet. Of course, we can customize that. And we'll take a look at how this monstrosity works. Now, the best thing about this printer is it's not very good. With the paintball mod, you can see there's a little bit of a random element to where all the splatter happens. And I actually used this sort of rig to kind of test that. So each pixel, quote unquote, is an eight by eight square. And you'll notice if we shoot it from this height, you kind of end up with this kind of a pattern and it's not always perfect. You can see it doesn't always cover the entire square, but it makes for a really hilarious printer and makes for some epic drawings. So we're going to let this checkerboard pattern continue and you'll see it goes through row by row and each time it goes, it increments the entire page out and just slides it out one extra row. And then of course keeps printing the next row and we can make any design we want using this computer now i could probably modify this design while it's printing and it won't care because it literally reads it line by line and of course we've got this massive logic nonsense to make all this work but it's been a while since i did sort of a cool logic project with you know some computerized stuff and there's a lot of easier ways to do this we could have easily just had an image with a bunch of color sensors and you draw the image and it scales it up or we could have done it even with a bunch of switches or even like blocks on sensors or whatever but i thought the only way to really do this like you know a real computer is to make some sort of a digital screen with a digital selection matrix and then a printer that attaches to that and reads the inputs off the digital screen so this is going to finish up but in the meantime we'll just take a look at how this works so it's a pretty simple system as you can see i can adjust the row we're selecting there on the left with the up and down one and two keys i have them mapped to t g f and h for one two three and four so i can adjust up and down with t and g and i can go left and right with f and h and then of course if i press five that'll swap the pixels. So if I take this first pixel in the top left here, every time I press five, it'll swap it. So if it's on, it turns it off and vice versa. And I could just go through and do this whole thing, no problem. Now, the only unfortunate thing with this is if you put it on a lift, it will reset all the pixels back to zero because they are all being stored as logic memory bits. It's a 14 by 10 pixel screen. So we've got 140 pixels. It's a fair number of them. And of course, we've got all these logic gates set up here. So each of these rows is actually the memory bits on the screen it looks it looks really messy but it's actually kind of simple if you think about it each screen pixel is just a display it's just like an extra logic gate that feeds out of the memory bit and all you're doing is setting or resetting all the various memory bits you can see here as we go through the rows on either side we've got these memory bits which determine which row you're selecting so you can see here we're selecting the fourth row and we've just got some extra logic gates some and gates and stuff which link in so every time we press let's see if i can uh, you gotta zoom in at just the right amount here but every time we press up or down you'll notice it flicks those two gates and that's what moves our selection using those and gates it says okay if this one's lit up i have to reset the previous one and move it to the next one so pretty simple system there and of course our drawing is done i uh i accidentally you know i changed the drawing while it was painting so we painted this uh, but now that our drawing's done, it's pretty simple. We can just delete this, remove that, and boom, get our, our wonderful drawing here. And just, you know, pull it off and, uh, oh, oh, out of the way. Yeah, get that out of the way. Wonderful. It's a great looking drawing. Of course, we can delete that. And then, of course, we grab ourselves a sheet of new printer paper. And we just take that and somehow find our way. It's very large. I mean, it's 8 by 8 pixels. Everything is incredibly large. And then, of course, we've got to reset our printer. So we go back here, put our printer back to the start. Perfect. Everything is super laggy because we have a giant flat piece on the ground. We grab this and we can, of course, weld it back onto here. Maybe. Um, I forgot to build a thing. There's supposed to be a little stand here for you to weld this onto. Oh, you can do that and be just a hero. But yeah, I got I, I meant to build the stand here. So I'll build that so you can reload the paper. Of course, it's actually easier just to really delete the whole thing and and just spawn in a whole new printer um 
because, you know, it's a blank sheet that way. So pretty simple stuff, but I figure what we'll do is we'll draw some stuff. It actually, it's it's really easy to understand. I know it looks like a lot. It's a thousand gates. And then the printer function itself is actually even easier. So on the right here, we've got these green logic gates. So across the left here, these white ones, that's your row selection. This is your column selection across the top. Works the same as the row selection. Not really a big deal. And then we've got all these purple ones here which again it takes this purple and gate and this pink and gate and that combines with the row and the column to determine which one of these gates actually needs to be lit up which one of these um uh, memory bits you're accessing right and that's how the whole digital computer side of things works right so if we go here you know we can just draw a line whatever easy mode no big deal um and that and that works pretty well but then on the right here, we've got the actual sequence of things. So these are the memory bits we use when we're printing. All this stuff here is for the printer. And it's really quite simple. It starts with the first row and it lights up this first gate. These buttons are just for testing purposes. But it lights up the first gate and then it just goes across the row. And as this printer head hits each of the sensors, that's where it says, hey, I need to print the next bit if that bit is lit up. So of course, you can change the color we're printing. Uh, we are printing in black simply because this spud gun, which is actually a paintball gun, is black. But we can change that. Let's print in yellow this time. We'll print in yellow. And of course, if you want to, you know, paint this entire thing, you could do that and have a different background color. But we'll print in yellow and we'll try and make ourselves a little bit of a stick man here. Um, so we can do, of course, layers after the fact. So let's do a nice... Oh, that's that looks bad. Let's do a face. Maybe, you know, let's do a, a really big headed stick man here. Let's get nice big head there perfect something like this um just because i want to be able to put a face on it after the fact so there we go this looks this looks great already i can tell this is going to come out real well now of course it is a it is a really bad printer um so we'll do that get some get some feet there we go perfect something like that and then let's put some arms on this guy Oh yeah, this is, that's art right there. Perfect, that's a wonderful picture. And then we can of course press print. And now it's doing its thing. So it's gonna start there. Now you'll notice it only prints when it goes from left to right. When it's coming backwards, it uses that same amount of time to move the paper out. So there's a huge stack of pistons at the other end, and as it comes back, it slides the paper out to the next row, and then it just keeps pushing to the next side. I think it takes like a couple minutes to print total. Oh, that was a bad one. These aren't even connected. You know, <laughs> the paintball splatter. Sometimes you get some really bad splatters. Like sometimes you get one that's only like five pixels across. And this is, of course, going to take a while. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't work like a real printer in the sense that a real printer, the head would move really quickly until it gets to a spot that it has to actually print. And then it would, you know, print that spot and then continue to move quickly. Uh, this one moves at a constant speed across just because, you know, it's five pistons that just constantly expand. There we go. We're drawing the arms. Well, you can see it's, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good so far. Is there a neck? Did we put it? We did put a neck. Perfect. A single neck piece. It actually drew a pretty good body. The legs are a bit disconnected, but, you know, we also are using the diagonals. We probably should have made the legs a little more incremented with, like, you know, sloping down pieces. There we go. Now it's going to draw the face on this thing. Wonderful. But really, overall, I'm really happy with this build. I think it's really, really fun. I think it's stupid. I, I mean, very stupid. But it's a pretty cool build, nonetheless. And it's just kind of a fun thing to play with. It took a fair amount of time to build. And I know it's like, I'm not really getting into too much detail. I mean, it's pretty, it is really simple. Those of you guys who understand logic, you'll realize it's just, you know, a bunch of selection, a bunch of selection, a bunch of, all this is just repeated nonsense. It looks really terrible, but it is just the same thing 140 times, which is a little painful, but thankfully we can connect a few of them and then yeah it, it's it's painful and then this right here this is the print head so whatever row you're on you'll see it actually illustrates the pixels that are on that row right here so as it gets to this next row it's gonna go okay i gotta paint these five middle pixels ignoring the back two and then we're gonna get to the top row and there's nothing to paint on that row it'll still finish it anyway and just go across because there's nothing that actually checks i probably could have put in a check to skip a row but anyway whatever and then when the whole thing's done It'll uh, finish up there, and we can just press the red button, resets it, pulls the page all the way back to the start. So let's do another layer to this now. Um, let's get rid of all this nonsense. Perfect. Uh, let's get rid of this, and delete that, delete this, and delete this. And then I want to try and outline the head, so we're going to do that. And 
hollow out the inside of the head like this. And I want to give it like a face. Oh, I can't really give it a face if I outline it, can I? Okay, hold on. Let's just give it a face then. Screw the outline. Let's just... So that was where the eyes should be, I think. Something like that. And let's put a mouth on this. Oh no, that is that is terrifying. That is, I need, I need, you know what, let's just, it's gonna look like that. Alright, perfect. And then we're gonna paint this black. Now this is gonna take, like, forever to print. And it's literally just gonna print, like, five pixels. So, we're just gonna kind of let that run for a bit. And just, just sit here. Not bad, though. Not, not you know, this is, this isn't the worst. I, I've seen worse things. Don't worry, after this I'm gonna try and make my logo. Um, which will be, like, three layers. And we'll see if we can actually make that work quite well. But, you know, a pretty stupid build. I haven't uploaded this to the workshop. It's been a while since I actually uploaded something to the workshop. And then, of course, you can join my Discord and send some pictures of the stuff you print. But it's kind of cool because you can detach the page and just, you know, use it for whatever you want. Um, but, of course, you are limited to only 14 by 10 pixels. So, it is what it is. Could make it bigger, but it, this is already like a thousand something logic gates. And it it is a pain in the butt to connect all that stuff. All right, are we gonna are we gonna get to the face now? Can we can we just paint? Oh, I deleted some stuff. That was my bad. I right clicked. Hold on, hold on. Got a hole in the page. There we go. Perfect. All right, are we gonna? No, next next row is the next row of the face. There we go. It's onto the face row. All right, let's do this. That is a great looking mouth. That's actually that's perfect. And then it's going to do the two eyes. Oh, yeah. No, that's not... That's not terrifying at all. That's... <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah, so it's, uh... It's, 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 you know, it's, um... You ever been into, like, one of those computer stores and bought, like, a $20 printer? This is pretty much the quality level you're getting out of it. So, actually, we can stop now. There's nothing left for it to print, so we can just kind of mash the red button a bit. And, you know, let it just... There we go. It'll reset the whole cycle. The whole cycle does run on these timers over here. So it's kind of a sequence timer. Now, each timer does have an AND gate. But the timers are, like, 5 seconds per cycle. So it's, you know, however many... It's 0.2 and then 5 and then 5 and then 5 and then 5. So it's just... It's a lot of 5 second timers. So it's a couple minutes to get through all the rows. And as long as you mash the red button for at least 5 seconds, it'll reset the whole thing back to start. But it basically sends one tick through the whole timer system. So you have to make sure you're pressing the red button when that tick gets to one of these AND gates. It's pretty easy to do. So let's just uh, save this picture entirely. Because why not? Alright, and now we're going to try and make my logo. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to get a dark gray. We can do this on a blue background, that's fine. We'll get a dark gray and we're going to make the outline for it. So I think we're going to do something like this. Uh, four at the top, maybe? This is kind of hard because it is a very tall sheet of paper. I tried to keep it sort of similar dimensions to like a proper page rather than actually, um, you know, making it like a square image or something. Yeah, that'll, that'll be perfect. And then we just got to add some extra lines on that and some eyes and stuff. All right, so let's print that up. This will be, of course, in dark gray. And we'll get the first two rows out of the way. I should have made a section that just skips. I could have made something that scans the entire row and says, hey, if there's no pixels in this row, then just, like, you know, jump ahead to row three or whatever. Um, that would have been a fair amount of extra stuff. So right now, like, it's going through the first two rows even though there's nothing there. There we go. Now it's actually going to start painting. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good first line. It's uh, not exactly the cleanest edge. This is like if I try and draw something with my hand and a pencil. This is pretty much the quality you could expect. But don't worry, it's we're getting there. We're in the generation of AI art now. So, you know, it's only going to look up from here. Oh, God. Did you see that? Look at that pixel. That was a really bad one. That, like, look at all this extra blue here. Sometimes that happens. There's there's a random element to this paintball mod, which is great, but of course you don't always end up with a perfect image. But, you know, either way, it's pretty cool stuff. Alright, this is not looking as much like my logo as I thought it would. It looks better on the screen, to be honest, than it does here. But anyway, just top that off. That looks great. This, this looks good already. Okay, so now we've got to do the next set of details. 
So we're gonna just hit this red button a bunch, let it, you know, reset, doesn't matter. Just keep mashing that. Yeah, see the printhead wanted to move because it's got that five second timer nonsense. We're all good, there we go. Uh, so there we go, hit that as black. Perfect, and now we gotta do the lines. So what I'm gonna do for that is just basically leave the image where it is. Get rid of these bottom two rows, because those will be gray. And there should be some black lines that sort of make the details of the garbage can. There we go. And that'll be our, our black lines. So now we can print this. And of course, that'll take a while to print. And then all we'll have to do is add the green eyes, which I realize now will be very difficult to do. Although we can just kind of count down from the black lines and put them like somewhere here. And then we should be perfect. And this is going to make a perfect version of my logo. All right, I think it's going to start painting now, right? No. Next next row? I should have painted the two lines starting there. I feel like I could have put them on that row as well. I might have to do some touch-up after this. Oh, yeah, I definitely, I definitely could have put the lines continuing down further. Well, that's unfortunate. We'll have to do some... Hold on. We can actually... Let's just stop this print real quick. Let's just cancel this print. We'll leave the black that's there. That's fine. It's not a big deal. There we go. And we'll just extend these lines down a little bit further. Doesn't really matter if you paint over it because, like, it's all random anyway. There we go. Now we'll start it up. I want the lines to start, like, down here and then work their way up. And then, you know, we'll put the lines on top as well. The eyes on top. It'll all be perfect. You can, of course, always change the color midway through. You just have to, like, paint that paint gun. Whatever color you paint that is the color it's going to be. I was debating on doing like an RGB sort of paint system, but you could only really have three colors anyway if you did that. Like it wouldn't mix the colors or anything. If you paint red and blue, it's not going to mix it. It's just going to be like a red and a blue dot. And then on top of that, the digital display is only one color. So we'd have to have multiple layers to it if we want to do multiple colors in the same print pass, which obviously we're not going to do. So this is fine though. I mean, it works out well. Oh yeah, that looks, that looks perfect. Now it's going to paint over these spots, which, if anything, is probably just going to fill them out a little bit better. Make them closer to that perfect 8x8. You can see it just added a little bit of extra detail there. This is such a stupid idea. I, I love it. It took way too long to do, and I'm really happy that I did it. But, uh, yeah, I don't I don't know why. Now I got to do, like, a, a wireless version where you can, you know, have the screen on some side of the map and then have a printer on the other side, and your friends have to try and guess what you're printing as it prints. I mean, we could do some crazy... Actually, we could just put a big wall up and do some Pictionary stuff, and someone has to design something on the screen, put a box around the screen, and everyone's trying to guess what they drew. That would be kind of funny. You could do some stupid stuff with that. But, uh, yeah, this is looking good. This is looking, this is looking real good. The pixels are kind of large, but I think it's perfect. I think it's doing one more row. Is it two more rows, maybe? I think it's just this last one. This is as actually, I can kind of see my logo in this. I should have done like one line. Oh no, this is even width, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, there we go. That's the last row. All right, perfect. So now we can reset this layer. Just mash that a bunch. Stop. There we go. Perfect. And paint this green. All right, now we got to do the eyes. So the eyes should be like here, which how many rows back is that? It's like one, two, three, four, five-ish. Five rows down, maybe six rows down. So we're going to clear this. We're going to have them just hang out a little bit from the outside, because why not? There we go. That's going to look good, I hope. I think they should be disconnected in the middle, though. Whoops. Maybe. Yeah. Let's, let's try it. What if I... Hold on. What if I do another... Whoops. What if I do another layer? Oh. That might... This might look like something. I don't know. Let's try this out. See what happens. Worst case, it's going to look terrible. I mean, it already... It already kind of... It already kind of looks terrible. I'm not going to lie. This is it's pretty... It's pretty bad. All right. There we go. I feel like I should have made the eyes lower. There are going to be some really high up eyes here. Uh-oh. I might have put I might have put them too high. Uh-oh, no. Yeah, I didn't measure correctly. Oh god, they're going to be so high up. Oh well. 
it's you know you know it's like a con where the eyes are sort of exploding out of that you know it's not the worst actually if i step way far back it's it's better than i thought it was gonna be that's not terrible kind of rounds out the edges a little bit too makes it look a little bit cleaner that's perfect Hold on, let's just, let's just break this off here now. We're pretty much done. There we go. Print is over. And then we can just, you know, put this up on a nice little block there. Just kind of grab this. Look at that. That is some art. That actually, you know what? It's not as bad. This is like if, you know those like five-year-old drawings that you put up on the fridge? I feel like this is the equivalent of that. It's pretty much a five-year-old drawing. But look at that, a triple layer printed drawing so either way pretty cool stuff i'm i'm really happy with how this turned out i mean again shout out to dr pixel plays for making such a hilarious and amazing mod i love the random element to this and the fact that you can just paint all sorts of stupid things but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below of course check this out on the workshop i'll put a link in the description and uh you know show me your art on discord if you want to send me art that would be kind of cool that you make in this game because uh you know this is just this is a masterpiece and i'm super excited to make more stupid things but let me know what you guys think if you have any other cool scrap mechanic logic projects you'd want to see it's been a while since i did a logic project but to be honest it was kind of fun to get back into them again it's always fun figuring out stupid projects like this and uh, even though it looks complicated it is i know i say this a lot it is actually really simple it's such a simple mechanism it's just a bunch of memory bits storing values and it all works really really easily together to make you know something stupid happen so let me know what you guys think make sure you hit that like button hit the subscribe button and as always i hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time